O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Praise and thanks to God. This morning dawns, dear Savior, my praise and thanks I bring for your rich grace and favor. With songs of joy I sing, though seated on your throne, you still. Welcome to Morning Prayer this Good Friday. My name is Keith Free, one of the pastors at St. John's Lutheran in McGonagall, Wisconsin. To guide us in our devotional thoughts, we look at the 27th chapter of St. Matthew, beginning with verse 45. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, noon to three, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said he is calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got the sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. But the rest said, Leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit, saying, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. As we hear those words and as we think of Good Friday, I want to just have us briefly focus on what God the Father said about sin on Good Friday. Now, some of you might be scratching your heads. You're saying, I know that on Good Friday, Jesus spoke seven times from the cross. Uh, but I don't recall God the Father speaking. Now, it's true during Jesus' ministry, the God the Father spoke at his baptism. He spoke at his transfiguration. And then he spoke one more time on Holy Week. But you are true. There was no verbal communication from God the Father on Good Friday. And yet God the Father spoke, certainly spoke loudly about sin. He, he spoke uh, loudly about sin and how serious sin is. Um, sin is disobeying God. That's a very simple definition. It's going against what God says we are to do or are not to do. Because we have failed to do his will, God's word is very clear. We cannot join him in heaven when we die. Uh, a sinful person cannot be in the presence of a perfect God. Thus, God in his infinite wisdom, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit made a wondrous plan that Jesus Christ would come to this earth. Now, Jesus came and perfectly fulfilled the, the Father's will, and ultimately he came to the cross on Good Friday. And here we just see how serious sin is, as God said, my son, not you, 
my creatures, but my son, the one who has always been with me, will be the one who makes that payment. He will be the one who sheds his holy, innocent blood. He will make a once-for-all payment, sacrificing himself on the altar of the cross. God is serious about sin, isn't he? He didn't push it to the side. He didn't make you and me be the ones who would work laboriously to try to earn our way to heaven. He, he blessed us with Christ. How serious is God about sin? Well, think about from noon to three o'clock. Darkness covered the earth. Pitch darkness. Um, <clears throat> Jesus is on the cross. He's suffering that payment for sin. Um, perhaps it was covering Jesus and the agony uh, so that no one could see the price Christ was paying. We know that final price, though, was total separation from God. Jesus cried out in that phrase about, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God was serious about sin. He he said it needs to be paid for. It can't be swept under the rug. And his son, Jesus Christ, came and made that once for all payment. We give thanks that we see the seriousness of sin, and we also give thanks that we can see that the payment was made. It was complete. Just briefly, as we think of that last verse, when Jesus gave up his spirit, when his soul went to heaven, uh, Scripture tells us that the curtain in the Holy of Holies was torn in two before no one could approach God except through the, the high priest uh, who would sprinkle the blood of the calf. Now God was saying that payment has been made. You and I, our sins are paid for in full. There's nothing more that needs to be done. In fact, every person of all time, every person's sin was paid for by the blood of Christ. What we are so blessed to, to know and receive is that through faith, as the Holy Spirit works in our heart, we, we receive that precious gift of forgiveness. As we think of Good Friday, yes, God talks about sin, how serious it is, how serious it is, but also reminds us what a blessed payment was made. God bless you this Good Friday. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.